<laughs> and now for something completely different. <clears throat> okay, we're back. Found my outer space. Just come here to find that weird look upon your face. I should have changed that stupid lock. Should have made you take my key. I forget all the words. I will survive. Rod is a dummy. <laughs> Skull mug of beer. Happy afternoon. Cheers. Yeah, five o'clock somewhere. So, Carl Pilkington. Yes. We made a mistake. I jumped to season two. I made a mistake. You don't do anything, so. <laughs> so I made a mistake. No. <laughs> All right, you should have just done it. This thing is coming handy. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, Where? I'm afraid. Just don't shoot my eye out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. Sound advice, Brad. Right. So I missed okay. an episode of Carl. You did. For okay. some reason, I don't know why. <clears throat> That's my story. That's. Anyways, we went back because Carl came home, and uh, we didn't do that episode, so now we're doing that episode. Carl comes home. So okay. this kind of summarizes season one, series okay. one. Okay, right? okay. Yeah. All right. Apparently, there's a Carl comes home in season two as well, but I... I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> I thought that was the one we were waiting for, so... Oh. Okay. Well, Never mind. Got to explain I just screwed up. And, and you know, very, very detailed because yeah. he doesn't quite get everything. No, it's not that. I'm just stupid. There, you didn't even have to say it. <laughs> I don't do my research. Anyhow, I don't mind going backwards. Oh, it's fine. And then Should forwards again. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to watch uh, yes. Carl comes home and he's going to, okay. they're going to talk about his trip on the first season okay. of the seven wonders of the world. So. Okay, well then let's, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Hey buddy. Hey buddy. What's this in the Guardian? Guardian Guide, pick of the day. All right. Oh, pick of the day. This this will be a good review then. The conceit of this ball achingly dull series. <laughs> have, have you ever? Has your balls ever ached from watching a program? Have you ever watched a program and gone? Don't know if I'm enjoying this, but my balls are aching. I, I ate it. <laughs> this is the dullest thing. Oh, hang on. It doesn't. I, I don't know what that means. His balls are aching because the series is that dull. If, if TV that he doesn't like makes his balls ache, why is it? Why don't you turn it off quicker? He must get a twinge and go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Does that like a comment or something? What was that? Yeah, he read it from uh, a review of the show. Oh, okay, okay. The Great Pyramids. <clears throat> Truly, man's greatest achievement. But there's one man who sees them differently. Most of the world is grim. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> Hard to let people know how bad it is. Oh, Jesus. I was ill, fed up. Wanna go home? Tired and didn't like where I was. Carl, where are you going? Carl! Oh. I'm not staying in that room. What's it about? <laughs> The stuff that these eyes have seen. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. There's loads of things that you go, why do you do that? And they go, it's tradition. Why is this traditional Chinese massage? Ah! Your body's in proper shock. I don't like having danger in my life. <laughs> Who are you giving this, all this shit? Sky one. That's who we're giving all this shit TV. to. If I had a bad heart, that could have done me in. Six. Six. Not doing any any more anyway. It's the end of it. Just let me go. Home. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Carl comes home. Carl, Hello and welcome, welcome to episode eight of An Idiot Abroad uh, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, Hello. and the eponymous hero, Carl Pilkington. Carl. All right. <laughs> I suppose this is a a roundup in a way. We've watched the series, we've laughed, we've cried, we've got angry. I, I got bored as well. <laughs> but welcome back, Carl, because, you know, it's quite an adventure. Are 
but you can see it for miles. It goes on for miles over the hills and everything. But so does the M6. <laughs> it's almost like a, a, you know, like a diamond in a turd. You don't see that in the brochure, do you? Oh, look at all the garbage. Shitty old nappy whizzing through the air. <laughs> don't you remember that? Yeah. The stuff that these <laughs> eyes have seen, right? They'll remember it. Well, it's funny you should say about your eyes because you know, I've been consulting your diary here. So, so the other reason I'm finding it hard to relax is that there always seems to be something going on, something to take in. I think I've blinked less since I've been here as I don't want to miss anything. So my eyes have been open longer than normal. Maybe that's why my eyes are so tired. When I was there, I was using my eyes more. When I'm here, sometimes I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> are you with me? No. What do you mean? Life here can be quite boring for your eyes. Sometimes driving. Mm. I get to some place and they go, how did I get here? <laughs> and it's because you're not really looking where you're going. <laughs> While driving? No, it's only the little odd things in life that makes your eyes sort of go, oh. Well, there's been a lot of things, isn't there? Food. You've seen some pretty grotesque things. Like Food. that fellow there who was your driver in China. Oh, man. This is incredible. Look at this lot. Thank you. She's all right. What's he having over there? Good Jesus. <laughs> Does he know it's not all in one piece, that noodle? <laughs> Are we in a race? I didn't realise... <laughs> I mean, what... Why is he in a hurry? I'm in his van. Should I be getting a move on? He's meant to be giving me a lift home. <laughs> the suction on that. <laughs> it's just one minute it's there. It's like opening an airplane window. It just all sucks out. <laughs> That's it, he's eating it. I've hardly touched this. What's he got now? What is that? I think it's chicken feet. You don't pick a, a food by what sort of feet it's got. Just just have chicken if he wants chicken. <laughs> We're paying, he could have had anything he wanted. And he's spitting it out now, he's just spitting his nails out by the looks of things. No, thanks, you're all right. I will not mind it. He's been munching, like, Minto's in the van. It's never offered me one of them. It gets the chicken feet. Suddenly, he's keen for me to have one. He's just spitting stuff out. He's chewing on it. He's spitting on it. I, I can't eat this. Stop <laughs> oh, See that, then? Don't watch him, don't watch him. It's his van. He'll have to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> you're not having pudding, are you? See, I'm with you on that. that there's, there's no oh, reason God. to eat like that. I don't think you'll ever hear of a Chinese man who's starved to death. Because there's no reason to. Street food out there. I thought street food meant, you know, you have chefs on the street cooking food. They don't, they don't mean that. It's street food. Whatever's crawling about, they grab and eat. <laughs> Do they? Yeah, honestly. Are they dead? Are they toads? Honest to God, that market, I thought it was a myth all that before I went. I thought they don't eat weird stuff like that because there's no need. There's loads of stuff in the world. You don't have to get to that level yet. I think even in Lost, in that programme, they, they didn't even get to insects and that, did they? They were stuck on an island there with coconuts. At no point do you see one going off to eat a squid or a, a lizard or a, a scorpion. It never happened. Yet there, they just... I'll have that. Not a problem. Just, just shoving them in the face. I mean, I don't think they do I'm a celebrity get me out of there in, in China. Because they'd go, the problem is, lovely, or you can eat Buffy, yeah? <laughs> Not a problem for them. <laughs> <laughs> that thing on the bus when they're all going <laughs> <laughs> it's disgusting doesn't matter where you're from i don't know what you have to do over there to offend someone just <coughs> farting burping spitting that driver he farted three times one morning <laughs> no one sort of went oh i had a laugh about it you dirty sod nothing just carried on <laughs> but that's the way they are. In a way, are they right? Is that the way we should live? I don't know. <clears throat> Noise has been a big thing on the whole trip. Um, well, look, here you're complaining about all the noise in Brazil. The airs just haven't stopped since they've been here. They've been overworked with constant, you know, drums, singing, whistles, chanting, dogs, <laughs> helicopters, gays. Warm massage <laughs> for your ego. Gays wouldn't normally be on that list, but the one I met here just wouldn't shut up. 
Now, I went to Brazil during carnival time. I had a whale of a time. I really enjoyed myself. Great. It's lively, it's vibrant, loads going on, people are in good spirits, colour, energy. You, nothing but whinging. No, because I don't like, you know, the carnival and the block parties. It's all parties for me. I've never liked them anyway. I've never really had them. I've never had a birthday party. Um, I just, when I see them, you know, like that advert for Iceland, Iceland supermarket. Yeah. You see Kerry Katona and Christopher Biggins have a little volivant. <laughs> I don't look at that and go, that looks like a good, good, good night. No. But you're meant to, aren't you? It's meant to give you a good feeling. Iceland supermarket, look at the fun you can have with the food. I don't know where that party would be happening. <laughs> but I don't look at it and go, I'd love to be there. And it was the same in Brazil. I don't like <laughs> false fun. That's what it is, false fun. Yeah. I don't like it when people organise stuff. Come round Thursday. Come round and have a drink and a chat. I don't know how I feel on Thursday. But you'd never get anything done if you didn't have a bit of planning. No, because you just, um, you go with it. It's good. Because you could go up to somebody and go, fancy coming round tonight, I've got some beers in, have a, have a chat. Oh, I wish you'd have said, I'm going to a party. I'll no, no you're not, no you're not. What, uh, what? Because there isn't such thing as planning. Right. I'm just in the mood, I'm walking okay. down the street. Okay. I see you. Yeah. Fancy coming round tonight? No. <laughs> Why not? I need more notice than that, really. Why? I've, I've left a chicken out. It's, it's, it goes off okay. tonight. And I go along, all right, Steve, are you coming round tonight? He's having chicken with me. Oh. Well, no, but I didn't know that because we hadn't arranged that. Yeah, you hadn't so arranged that. I've got something it. going on, Rick. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I can't eat a whole chicken. Do you want a chicken? Okay. And there you go, you see. So my night is better than yours. I'm eating your chicken. <laughs> I'm having a free night out here because there was no planning going on and I'm getting a free night of chicken. <laughs> now, imagine if on the Wednesday before you uh, went. What day is it now? What day was today? Tuesday. So Tuesday, we're all walking down the street. I always okay. get emails from people going, right. are you coming out next week? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like it. Hello. I'm Mr. Ashik. Ashik. Nice to meet you, Carlitos. How are you doing? All right, didn't wave back, so that's... They don't know what that means, or they hate me already. I don't, I don't know. You reminded me of Bill Oddy. Just looking at him, thinking, I haven't seen the goodies for ages. Yeah, I'm on your day. What? Yeah, I'm on your day, too. What's that? And then the other barber looked like Jim Morrison. Yeah, I'm on your door. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Hang on a minute. I won't be socialising. I don't do that. I've always said you only need seven mates to get you through life. That's it. That's why, you know, I've mentioned Snow White with the midgets. She had them all covered <laughs> in seven. Same thing again with friends. I don't want you met a lot of interesting characters. Tell us about your favourites. Who are the ones that stick in the mind? What about Celso in Brazil? Tall and thin and young and handsome, the boy from me, Panima goes walking in. When he passes, each one he passes goes, oh. I thought he was all right, Celso. How do I look? You know, he's, he's a different, different sort of mate. What was your first thought when he walked out looking like that? Mm. Oh, Jesus, what was that? It's just weird. It's like you've had uh, Wurzel Gummidge sort of change the head. Change the head. It's a little bit freaky. Why are you referring to Wurzel Gummidge? Why do you make no effort? to try and speak to people in terms they might understand. What's the chances of him, fell in Brazil, knowing who Wurzel Gummidge is? There's people watching this who won't remember who Wurzel Gummidge is. He just seemed very, sort of, well, well into the arts. <laughs> <laughs> and it's he's, he's his mates as well. Marcelo. Marcelo. Pleased to meet you. Hi, Carl. How you doing? Welcome to Rio. You're happy. I have never met, sort of met a gay You're man happy. so gay. It was just that <clears> voice, <throat> that sort of over-the-top, Nice enough, but I can't see us getting on long term. No. Do you know what? It's a good job I wasn't born gay because I don't know what I'd do. Why not? If you're gay, you'll be loving it, won't you? I wouldn't. Yeah. I don't think I'm suited to it. <laughs> Why? Just the, the lifestyle. Well, what do you I mean, mean the parties lifestyle? and stuff? Because the lifestyle, the way they, they walk about over there showing off, being quite a Okay, you, you wake up gay tomorrow. <laughs> What's the <laughs> first thing you do? Do you get a boyfriend or do you play the field? 
think you play the field. Yeah, you're gonna are you gonna talk the same? Yeah, maybe in time. I suppose things rub off. If I'm knocking about with John Inman's of the world, I'm probably going to start maybe the, a little sort of uh, uh, give me something to say. Uh, oh, hello. I haven't seen you for ages. Right, so it'd be a bit different. Maybe the oh, hello. Right. I haven't okay. seen you for ages. Okay. It'd be little things like that, and people would suddenly go, You met Carl recently. Sounds different. Or so you go, you go home, you go home, you go, go. Your dad goes, All right, so how's it going? Have you been doing any DIY recently? Oh, hello, Dad. I am. I haven't been there for a bit. Mm. Mm. Well, what are you talking about for, Carl? How's Suzanne? Uh, I'm, I'm not with her anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is pointless because it's not the life I would choose. OK, but you've woken up gay. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe it then. I'd just go, oh, I feel a bit happier today, don't know why. <laughs> no, but then you start going, oh, oh, you go down, you buy a game magazine, you're flicking through, you're looking at more cock than you've ever seen before in your life, and you're loving it. You look down, something's happened. <coughs> what do you do next? I just wouldn't look at that magazine again. <laughs> no, you're loving it. You go, oh, I can't believe I haven't seen this magazine before. Yeah, but I've seen knobs before. <laughs> Have you? Yeah. Where? You see knobs all the time. Where? In gyms and that. And don't say you don't look, because you do when you're in a gym. Because it's there. <laughs> what is? If you don't look, if you're going like that, that's, that's more of a worry. If you're not happy looking a knob in the face, there's something wrong. <laughs> Should be comfortable with it. Just, just so That's you a go. Good rule of thumb. <laughs> so, you have always been a big fan of what society would generally term freaks. You know, one of your your favourite movies is The Elephant Man, which is why we were very excited when we sent, sent you to see The Elephant Baba. Oh yes. That's the guy that folded his dick like four hundred times. Oh yeah, I can see yeah, it. Yeah, well, see it. that's one of them, man. Yeah. Oh Shoes right. Off. Yeah. Right down there. Oh. It wasn't as shocking as I thought it would have been. I think the weird thing is, with Elephant Baba, is it's different from Elephant Man. Because with Elephant Man, there was a build-up. He's walking about with a sack on his head. You know, what is under there? I mean, the first thing I always used to worry about, where, where, where he got that hat from, that fit him. <laughs> <laughs> it's a normal cap he had on, Elephant Man. <laughs> Who was that made for? But then he had the sack on top as well, and a little hole. And it, I, I remember watching it as a kid thinking, can I see anything in the hole? <laughs> and then he takes it off and he's like, oh, God, that's well weird. Now, with Elephant Baba, mm. it wasn't as weird. Do you know the Elephant Man? The weirdest bit of it is when he's walking out with that head but with a suit on. <laughs> yeah. Because it doesn't match. No. But in India, because he's sat there... If you went to a the tailor and they say, have you got anything to go with this? They'd go, not really. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas with the fella in India... It sort of goes with it. It goes with it. So it wasn't as shocking. Sure. Yeah. Now, there's the one arm Baba who... The fellow who had his arm in the air for 12 years. Well, that's ridiculous. From a distance, although it looks friendly, it's like he's going like that. Like, oh, here's, here's Carl and the camera crew. <laughs> I sit down, um, two fellas sat next to him, worshipping him. Yeah. They, they really? loved him, yeah. Yeah? You know, I asked all the normal questions. What are you playing at? Uh, why are you doing it? <laughs> straight in, straight in with what you're playing at. <laughs> I asked all the normal questions, what you're playing at. Right. I agree, though. I agree. What are you playing at? Apparently, yeah. there's other babbers with, like, two arms, one, ar one foot in the air. Really? It's mental. It's proper mental. But are they standing up or are they laying down with one foot in the air? Well, I suppose if you knock him over, that's it, isn't he? He's down for good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's man. the guy. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, there's another fellow with his knob and bollocks on a stick. What are you doing? <laughs> Carl, oh. you can't look a knob in the face. <laughs> I was happy looking the knob in the face. It's what he was doing to it. Well, he was just showing you his trick, his party trick. What was that? So oh. that probably would get him to the final of Britain's Got Talent. Oh, Amanda Holden would be a huge fan of that, wouldn't she? I, uh, Cock round a stick. I mean, I'll never forget it. That makes me cringe. Like, oh. You can't with the names. The names go with them. It's like old-fashioned names, how they say that if you were a baker, you'd be known as Mr Baker. That's how names caught on. Yeah. So the fact it's got Elephant Baba and one arm Baba, you don't go, uh, who's that one again? I can't quite picture him. I don't believe they are called Elephant Baba and one armed Baba. They are called that. When I went around that camp and I was saying to people, one arm Baba knocking about, they were going, yeah, he's about three tenths down. Everyone knew him. It was like a council estate. I have nicknames. John the Screw about, where's Tattoo Stan? <laughs> it's all the same thing, all these little nicknames. Yeah. Now, if I said where, I don't know his real name, but if he was called, I don't know, Neil or whatever, I mean, Neil about, they'd be going, Neil, who's, who's, who's Neil? What's, what, what's, what does he do in the camp? And you go, he's got a head like Elephant. <laughs> elephant Baba, three, three down. <laughs> so it's convenient. <laughs> <laughs> There's certain things I've learned. 
Go Tell on. us what have you learned? I learned that babies in China, a lot of them have square heads. <laughs> <laughs> right, go on. <laughs> Is this? Why? Can we look at this clip? He's a big lad. What about you? Has he got a square head? Have a look. See you then. I can't tell. Yeah. But why do they have square heads? I asked some questions, and the main answer seemed to be so they don't roll out the cot. No, <laughs> no way. How do they make sure their baby gets a square head? They, they somehow they stick a book to the back of its head when it's born. When you're born, you're your, your head's soft. Yeah, that's it? right, yeah. Did your mum strap What's... a dinner plate to your head when you were a kid? Wow. Yeah, what, what? a ladle. <laughs> but I didn't get all the ins and outs, and this is what I'm saying. But why does that... That doesn't stop them rolling out the cot. If you've got a square head, it's not like they couldn't roll out. Baby's heads, remember, your head is quite big as a baby. Right. <laughs> the, body's, the body's sort of like that, and its head, it's trying to roll, and it can't, because it's like that. And it's attractive, apparently, What do you mean? Do it again, do it again, do it again. The baby's in the cot, like that. And it would want to sort of... So if it try had a round head, it so could just go like that. Yeah, so now do it with a square... Uh, 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 how is it stopping it? I don't understand. So do because it it's kind of going... You can't roll. <laughs> what shape is a wheel? <laughs> round. <laughs> Some people think you are a character that we write and direct. If we'd created a character as brilliant as this, do you think we'd have flogged it to Sky? Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. There's loads of weird fish, though. There's, I think there's fish in here that I've read about that are so see-through that they're invisible. So I don't even think they know they exist. Because other fish don't go up to it and, like, mate and stuff. I don't know how it works. But they just it's like they're not there to us or to them. They might as well not be there. It's a really weird... I don't know all the facts. <laughs> if you're invisible, you'd eventually get ignored a lot and you'd go, well, there's no point acknowledging anyone because no-one can see me. Don't think that's how it works. Of course it is. Think if you were invisible and I walk past you, I'm going to ignore you, because I can't see you. You can't communicate, because I'd go, who was that? And eventually, you just go, I can't be bothered communicating. So you're just there, floating about, eating. So that's probably why they carry on, because they just eat, they've got nothing else to do. I read it, and I think they're in here, but you're not going to see them, so I can't prove it. <laughs> There's people out there who said I'm an actor called Graham. Yeah. I wish I was. I wish I was. Well, change your name to Graham and become an actor. No, because then they go, oh, we knew that. So the reason you're you not out. changing your name to Graham and becoming an actor is that you don't want to give idiots the benefit of the doubt. Well, no, it's also that thing of remembering that you've changed your name. It's like <laughs> I told you, didn't I, when I was a kid and I changed my name to Brett. Everyone in the family went along with it and I kept forgetting. They kept <laughs> shouting at me and I was ignoring them. <laughs> the voice isn't working. All right, mate. How are you getting on, man? Uh, well, I've, I've had better holidays. Um, <laughs> it's not a holiday. I have to keep reminding you, it's not a holiday, my friend. You are making a travel program for the television. I can never enjoy anything, can I? Oh, no. Get out of the Dead Sea, put some clothes on, and do some fucking work. Oh, fucking shit. Well, I've got a little surprise for you. You're spending the night in a cave, Carl, tonight. What for? It's funny. But... <laughs> I had some sort of new pudding that I've never had before. Carrots with sort of milk and sugar on it. I enjoyed it. I don't know if I'll find it in London. I don't want to watch you eating carrots on the telly! In HD. Even in HD. <laughs> I reckon I've had about an hour's kit. I am knackered. And I don't know how to get that across to them at home, that I'm pissed off. Oh. This is for my amusement. And if you're having a bad time, bumping up and down on the camel with your, your, your testicles being battered, that's good entertainment. This uh, is what I'm giving back. This is what I'm giving back to society. You are my gift to the rest of the world. Now, that's, that's the other thing as well, that um, people think that, you know, because I call you a little round-headed, chimp-like buffoon, <laughs> moron, <laughs> mank, twonk, I could go on. <laughs> Some people, they mistake that for bullying. What would you say about people that, uh, that me and Steve bully you? If, if they think I am being bullied, what, what are they doing? When would they come to me help? Where's Esther Ranson? Why hasn't she been on the phone? 
phone, leave me alone, nothing's happened. Everyone's saying that, I've seen that everywhere. Carl's being bullied. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm nearly 40, don't worry about me. And two, well, if you're worried about it, do something. <laughs> yeah, really. I've had posts delivered to me. And because you say, Carl Pilgrim's got a bit of fucking orange, people think they can do it. I got some lamps delivered in a box. Somebody along the way, I don't know who, either the bloke who packed them, the courier, or I don't know how many people involved in packing lamps and getting them to me, but somebody wrote on the box, head like a fucking orange. <laughs> now that shouldn't happen. Of course, there were a number of instances where we had planned stuff that you were completely unaware of. In fact, most of the trip you had very little idea where you were going to go and what was going to happen. I think a highlight for both Ricky and I was when we gave you some very important training in the event that you were Amazing. captured during I mean, a that, terrorist attack. Again, move. that went better than I ever imagined. Hello, oh, Wagman! Hello, Wagman! Hello, Wagman! Hello, Wagman! Hello! 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 You did not know they were going to attack you and grab you and drag you in the back of a van. It all went black. Um, I heard a lot of shouting going on. I didn't know what was happening. I thought, is this it? Have I been taken hostage? They put my hands behind my back. They put one of those tie things on. It was cutting into my hand. I'm thinking, is this for the programme or what? Because this is proper hurting. It's not, it's not a nice thing. I've never experienced Did that you? Before. They often say in those moments where you think maybe your life is going to come to an end that your whole life flashes before your eyes. Is that what happened? No, because uh, like I said to you, I, uh, nothing, I had a bag over my head. I couldn't see a thing. Do me. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I'm sorry. Are you English? <laughs> You're English. You can't flash me. before your eyes. Who are you? I love it when you go, who are you? When the adrenaline's kicking in, you can hardly breathe and you do a posh voice. <laughs> who are you? No, <laughs> because it's terrifying, that, not knowing what's going on. Uh, what is the number of him? He's in my mobile. What mobile? What is the number of him? I don't oh, know. I, I, will, I, I don't even know my mum and dad's number. I thought maybe this is part of the setup. I don't know. But my body didn't know because it was going through the same thing as... Terry Waite would have gone through or whoever else had been tied to a radiator. Did you learn anything from that, though? That was important training to make you able to cope if such a th terrible thing did occur to you. If you go to places that you're in danger of being kidnapped, you're meant to have a code word. So that, when the people who've nicked you right. call up the London office, yeah. Yeah. they go, we've got Ricky, Steve and Carl here. Right. And the London office go, yeah, yeah. Give us your code word. Well, at the time, mm. it was Congress Tart. <laughs> Congress Tart. How are you going to slip that into a conversation? No, you don't slip it in. They've got a bag over your head, gun to your head or whatever. Tell them you've been kidnapped and you go, Congress Tart. And they go, bloody hell, he's been kidnapped. <laughs> Before you know it, the A-team's coming in. <laughs> right, so, uh, um, ring, ring. Hello, Carl, mate. how's it going? Congress Tart. <laughs> what? Congress Tart. Rick, okay. who's on the phone, mate? Uh, it's, uh, it's Carl. He said Congress time, so he's definitely been kidnapped. <laughs> Who are they? What do they want? Right. Who am I talking to now? Because Them. Not... Ask them. What do you want? <laughs> he's asking what you want. Well, there's no one here to do that bit of role-playing, so maybe you should tell me what they're saying. They said... Um, they just said they, they want to use me as bargaining power. But what do they but want? What do they want? We'll see if we can make... But what do you actually want? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What would they want? Is it money? Th give them money. Money. <laughs> okay, million, money. Uh, two, five million pounds. <laughs> Too much. I'm not spending that sort of cash. I've worked hard no, for this. You don't do that. I I'm not spending that cash. You see, this is what worries me. I'm not spending this five million to get you back. Th that's crazy. what's worried. No. Because that's what would have happened. Can't we negotiate? Put, the, put them on. Yeah, here's Ricky. Right, you've got to pay <laughs> him as well, though. Hello? Hello. Who's that? Never mind who it is. Where's my five million? Can't afford five million at the moment. We're going to kill this kid if um, you don't kid, give us the five million. Uh, you, We're getting him sick of him. Why? Why? What's he doing? He's just shouting Congress tart. <laughs> <laughs> give him the money. Give us the money. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't have got him to call you actually. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> okay, let's have a break. Oh God. <laughs>
It's not really a dance, is it? It's like a little bit of a it's like when geese fly over. Yeah, kind of sounds like that. It's just that. Not really. Uh, not using. Not even adding. Not even adding that sort of thing to it. Just a bit more with the face, even. It's that sort of old man shuffle who's, you know, when old men are sort of a bit pissed up and the pants have fallen down a bit. Sort of like that pissed up walk. But, you know, it killed a bit of time. There was nothing else to watch. And I was tempted to sort of add, sort of join the line and then do that and see if they copy it and then that would be me giving them something. And then is that interfering? Maybe it wouldn't look frightening by the time, you know, if another tribe came in and they all stood over there looking like Lionel Blair, you know, they're just going to go, right, let's get them. We can handle these. I mean, I'm so jealous of you being in the Peruvian jungle. Didn't you have a whale of a time? Um, fucking hell. I want to go home. People watching it will sort of go, <laughs> eh, but, you know, I've seen all this. Rain maze and Bear grill sucking on elephant shit and all that. It's hard to let people know how bad it is yeah. out there. When I came out of there, I'd, I'd had no phone signal. Five days, no phone signal. Stuck in the jungle, the Amazonian jungle, in a one-man tent and then with a tribe for a couple of days. Called Suzanne up and said, all right, I'm safe and all that, expecting to get, like, a hero's welcome. All I got was, oh, uh, it's, it's reassured me that if you died, I'd be all right. <laughs> That's what she said. For 16 years I've been with her. Not a day's gone by when I haven't spoke to her at some point. She turns around and says that. I'd be all right if you were dead. All right, cheers for that. I, I've got to call Ricky now. I called you up. So, well, I had a meeting with everyone, and they weren't sure about the title, Carl because seven one did it. Um, I came up with an idea they really like, they're pushing through, want to run it by you. Um, and if you're abroad. <laughs> well, no, we didn't, we, didn't say any, we didn't say anything about that. We said it's Carl Pilkinson's Seven Wonders. Hello? Yeah, but they were, they were saying, you know, who's Carl Pilkinson? Yeah, well, who's, who's the idiot abroad? <laughs> What? You're the idiot abroad. They loved it. They absolutely loved it. Yeah, well, they, they would, cos you interview. said it. You know what they're like? They all sit there going, oh, yeah, that's great, Ricky, yeah, yeah. We'll do that. We're not having an idiot abroad. It's Carl Pilkinson Seven Wonders. I've been through a load of shit here. You're sat there. He going, always loses. The titles. We're not having an idiot abroad. We're not having it. It's the one one thing that I said uh, that I'm happy with. I've got... A, I don't want people thinking I'm a div. Who was in the meeting? Well, I'm back in a, in a couple of days. We'll we'll have another little meeting about that. Let's have another little meeting. Was they all, all croissants there and free coffee? Was they all sat around on their arse? <laughs> yes, that's great, Ricky. Any other ideas? Pour us another coffee. I'm sick of that lot. Tell them now. Call them now and tell them that we're not doing series two. Nip that in the bud. I'm not doing any more. That's, that's yeah, you are. That. We that's are. Do some more. People love it. I've had enough no, of that now. I've people... done that. I've had enough. No, let's do it. Come on, let's think of something else you can do. Seriously, what about this? We're not going to sort that out today. Idiot abroad. <laughs> Fool's gold. I give you a million to spend, and you've got one year to make two million. I've got <laughs> a double a million. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can gamble, you can put it all on a horse, or you can put a little bit on a horse. You go to Dragon's Den. You go, look, I've got an idea. Clippable mug. What about the tie with, like, you can carry scissors in and oh, stuff? It's already out there. Is it? <laughs> oh, what, yeah. you, what was the first thing you'd do with that? If I said you've got, you've got a year to make one million and you've, already, you've got this million? Just do loads of stuff. Well, then, go on, then. What, what's the first thought? What do you do? Antiques and um, buy antiques, flog them on, art. Right. Or buy a house in Bulgaria. What do you know about whoa, whoa, antiques? Whoa, 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 whoa. You're going to buy a house in Bulgaria. That's your first thought. How much is the house in Bulgaria? 100 grand. Right, how much do you want to sell it for? I'm going to sell it for 200, I'm going to do it all. You're going to double your money on a house Easy. within a year. Easy. You've got to make 130. Oh, yeah, I'm spinning plates here. This is Go on, what else are you So you've got to keep flying under. to Bulgaria to yeah, check on I've the I've got the local place. builders on it. Right. In right. Bulgaria? Yeah, there's plate spinning. Right. Antiques on the go. I'm buying What's scratch antiques? cards. You're buying scratch I'd cards? I buy a load of scratch how cards. How many? <laughs> 
5,000 scratch cards. 5, right. I'd have some kids doing that. I'd say, right, you can have a fiver. Um, <laughs> You're giving you it to all the people. I haven't got time. I'm giving this, it them to do. This is the worst <laughs> idea I've ever heard. That my my, my million's gone, isn't it? Yeah, it's no, it hasn't. I mean, I've just... It hasn't. If you've got money, you make money. That's a fact. Where is Bulgaria? It's somewhere. I know Bulgaria is good for property. I've seen right. a lot of property programs. Do you That's mean what Belgravia? I do. I just watch. No, no, no. There's a lot of play things that you can do with property, antiques, and what buying else? classic cars and doing them up. <laughs> so you're doubling your money on a classic car in a year? I'm, yeah, but I've made stuff. I've made inventions. What have you done? Do the Dragon's Den. Like you say, the clip on my idea. Like a, you have your cup there. But look at that saucer. Every time I have a cup. Have a little bit of tea. I'm talking to you. I've got to go like that. I've got to look exactly where I'm putting it again. Right. The clipper will is stuck on. It's, it's attached to it at all times. That's ridiculous. I'm to you. How's it going? And if I want, <laughs> I have to put it down there. I have to put it down there. I'm not limited as to the surface that I can put it on. It's attached. It's washerproof. Dishwasherproof. It's an idea. <laughs> oh, <man. That's> <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. So am I. <sighs> Most of the world is grim. Louis Armstrong did that What a Wonderful World song. I don't know what he's going on about. If Louis had seen what I'd seen, he wouldn't have brought that out. Well, Carl, you talked a lot before you went on the trip about how probably your happiest holiday time was when you were younger. Where were you used to go? Wales. Wales. Port Maddock. Right. Year after year after year. It was brilliant. And why was it so great? It's everything you want. It's a good, like, you know, it was a good holiday park. Right. Weather was good. I had loads of mates there. There was always kids knocking about who I got on with. Arcade, beach. There was Els Angels down one end. <laughs> um, and I remember watching them thinking, I want to be one of them. I want to be a Hell's Angel. Because they looked hard. All the leather on and that. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, you see, this is, again, this might not be true. But my mum told me. It might have just been to put me off. She said, to be a Hell's Angel, you've got to shit in your pants. <laughs> your mum giving you <laughs> So shit in your pants and keep them on for a week. <laughs> so, uh <laughs> Yeah, my dad said me, Auntie Nora could have joined them. <laughs> but, uh... So, what you're saying is that you have nothing but happy memories of your glory days I loved it. back in Wales. And, you know, you were whinging when we were sending you on these trips. You were like, oh, I had a great time back in Wales, blah, blah, blah. Well, we sent you back to Wales. Let's have a look how you got on. Every holiday we had, we'd go to this place in Wales, this campsite. Mum and Dad's got a caravan there. It's designed, it's high tech. I want you to experience it. It's all right, isn't it? <coughs> this is good, do not it? So you don't have loads of space for stuff like that. <laughs> Big okay. fire. That's his excitement. Three bedrooms it's got. Now, what's good is, normally, say if um, your gran comes in. Oh, I didn't know you whole family's coming. Where can I stay? You just go and gone. Watch how quick this is. Huh? Oh. oh, no, that isn't one. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, he's looking for you a pull-out stay there. Yeah. Wrong way. Well, she can just sort of, you know. They're not very comfortable, anyways. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Lay on an angle. Yeah. <laughs> it's not as fun when you're an adult. You no. Know? Kids around you around. I remember getting so chicken pox when I was here. I just sat in the bath with a load of salt. Stop a mitching. Uh, 
I burnt my hand badly because Joan Rossi was with us on holiday and she gave me a plate with sausage rolls on it and she handed it to me with a tea towel and I just grabbed the plate, stuck to my hand. A lot of injuries happened here. Really. <laughs> Some people are next door. <laughs> that might get annoying. They've put us right next to a family of 12 or whatever and they seem to sort it'll be out there all night. They've got a table there with all sorts. Game of Monopoly. You don't have a quick game of that. You know what I mean? They're, they're there for the night now. Your company now. If I was there, I'd be quite happy sat here. I'd probably put the telly on, have a cup of tea or something, relax. But because you're here going, what do you do now? What do you do now? It's like I've got to try and impress you. What's wrong with just sitting here now? The air's coming in. They're getting on my tits. Doesn't seem yeah, that exciting compared to what he did, eh? Yeah. It's a bit of a rocky day that. today, isn't it? See, this isn't. I don't really want Ricky and Steve to see it like this. <laughs> Things broke. <laughs> Will we go back. It's been a bit rubbish, hasn't it? That's been a bit rubbish. I don't know, is it because I've changed? Is it because I've been around the world and seen other things and then seeing this doesn't doesn't work anymore? Have I sort of messed up the fact that I used to like simple things and now, you know, the Suzanne books holiday, I'll be going, never mind, local tribe. Why is that? Why is that One of my ambitions for the series, I mean, I know Ricky's got his own agenda, but I was hoping that, you know, maybe travel would broaden the mind. That's the phrase that we hear. Do you feel, now the dust has settled, like a different Carl? You're saying about the broadening of the mind, I put more stuff in the mind. Right. And whenever you do that, something has to go, doesn't Why it? Why does well, something have to go? No, no. Um, it's a so mind. There's, everything's only got a certain amount of space. There's never an endless supply. Even with computers, they go, oh, disk space full or whatever. <laughs> it's the same with the brain. But when I, I learn a new fact, in. I don't have to make room. I don't have to go, right, I've got to chuck some out. Got to chuck some out now. Of course you do. Unless you're Stephen Hawking, who's got it all on hard drive, you can't just go, oh, where's that thing? Where's that thing that, that I want to remember? You might go, oh, I remember knowing something like that before when you were talking about bananas. <coughs> now, I had that fact about if you eat more than six, it can kill you. No, that's definitely not, that's not a fact. It is a that, fact. No, it's not a Potassium fact. Potassium levels are dangerously high if you have six bananas. <laughs> now, I didn't, I, when I walked in here today, I wasn't going, let's tell Ricky about the banana fact. I went in that place you're having makeup on, I saw a bowl of bananas, I said there's six bananas there, you know why there's only six, seven would be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> this still happened. What fact squeezed out of your brain to accommodate the banana information? I don't know, because I forgot it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh my God. I see trees are green. <laughs> <laughs> doors or anything. I see What the fuck is that? <laughs> is that someone's gauze? <laughs> <laughs> the lights are changing. Lights, lights, lights. A load of bees here. <laughs> He's anywhere safe. <laughs> That's a testicle. <laughs> Marcelo. Marcelo. Not bad. OK. Uh, uh, Jesus. Fuck you now. I'm not putting Almost. myself above my station here. Eh? I thought it was going to be the new paling. Soon found out I didn't know much. Then I put myself out to learn a bit more. 
It's been a journey. People watching it have been on my journey. Everything I've been through, they've seen. I mean, they say travel broadens the mind, but I don't know if it does. Buggers it up. <laughs> I'm knackered. It's good. Excellent, yes. Yeah. I'm glad we watched this, yeah. That's, yeah. That's awesome. Carl comes home. Yeah. Actually, it's an interesting thing, though, isn't it? Like, <clears throat> it's true when he goes back. Of course, whenever I go back and see some of the things I enjoyed when I was a kid it's oh, kind yeah. of the same idea like yeah you enjoyed it because you were a kid too like, exactly yeah. yeah like I remember going to my grandma's uh, park on the lake and uh oh, excuse me I'm sorry am I boring you always <laughs> anyways you were saying yes um I remember going back to my grandma's place on the lake and when I was there, I remember there was an arcade there. We'd go swimming. I always borrow a change and go play mm -hmm. at the yeah. arcade and yeah. and uh, do all kinds of fun things as kids. But you know, you go back there now, and we'd all be doing what the parents used to do: just sit around and yakking, drink, yeah. and I'm yak thinking. about stupid things yeah, and exactly. whatever. So complain about the kids borrowing our change all the time. I don't know what happened to us. Got older. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow. Excellent first series, yes. Yeah. It was really good. I know we've already started series two, but that's okay. I'm, I'm glad we went back and did I'm totally know. happy we watched yeah. this, yeah. That was, that was good. Our camera, like, tilted forward a little more, too. Yeah. <laughs> Still see the boobies, though. <laughs> Brad, Brad always needs the boobies. That's how I line time. the camera up. It's got to be the nipple on the top right corner meets the guitar on the top left corner. That's how I line the camera up. He's so, <laughs> he's so clever, isn't he? <laughs> All right. Okay, Anyhow. so we're done. All right, we're going to take a break and do some more recording. Yes. So hope you, hopefully you enjoyed uh, Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Carl. And, the first season, anyways. Yeah, yeah. And the first season, we'll get, and we're already started the second one, so we'll enjoy that. Yes. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> And now for something completely different.